Hello? Can everyone hear me? Hello. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to talk about QNLP using diagrammatic software. So this demo is going to be roughly two parts. And uh, the first half, you're going you're gonna to see how we build, we manipulate uh, monodal diagrams, IEDs like diagrams in ViscoPy, which is a library that we've developed. And uh, we'll talk about things at a high level and how we convert things to quantum circuits. And then later on, we'll talk more specifically about QNLP. And that will be using Lambeck, which is another software package we've developed. Um, so you have the notebooks in the channels. So if you want to follow along and run those cells, you can. I've run them in advance. So um, yeah. Cool. So in DiscoPy, um, the diagrams are you can build diagrams using boxes of wires, as we've talked about today. And uh, these boxes of wires um, have the wires have types, so you first define the types of uh, the wires by importing type in the scopi. You can define these types, and once you have that, you can have identity wires, right? So if you put, you can tensor these two wires together, food and water. You get this diagram with two wires on it. Um, so this is how you compose two diagrams together using the at operation. So it corresponds to the tensor product. You can do more things with it. You can draw like more arbitrary string diagrams. So when you have a swap here, um, you're swapping, you have two processes, you have two systems, one that contains water, one that contains energy, and you swap it. And now you're, you're working in a symmetric monodal category. So this is a monodal category equipped with this swap operation. Um, to define a box, you need to give its input type and an output type. In this case, we have a human box, which is a process that takes in food and water and converts it to energy. Um, and the way you construct this is you take, you import the class box from DiscoPy, you give the box a name, and then you give it input and output type. Um, so it's very straightforward. Um, you can draw it like this. Um, what's after this is you can, you can compose things together. Oh yeah, so you have, um, so let's say pasta is a type of food and wine is a very like impure form of water. And you can tensor it together again. Um, here, this is an example of like you have an empty type. So this is a box that takes in no wires at the top. This is how you would define it in DiscoPy. And uh, so here you go. You have w pasta and wine, and you can put pasta and wine into human, right? So when you and, and so you when you compose when you compose this diagram, so you, you do pasta at wine followed by human, you get this following diagram, and it all type checks. So if it, if it doesn't type check, you, you get an error that the types don't compose. So you can see using this kind of syntax, you can define arbitrary string diagrams for anything, right? And um, you can, it's a bit tedious, but you can do it for arbitrary large diagrams by hand if you, using the syntax. Um, you can flip diagrams. So like we talked about how we work in a dagger category, maybe. And uh, if you have a human, you can have the, you can take a dagger of a human, you can flip it upside down, and now you can you see these two boxes can be joined together, and that would be like you dagger you um, in the quantum context. But this is right now it's a bit abstract. We're talking about humans and food and water. Um, ah, so here's another concept we've talked about, like functors. So functors are a type of like recursive way of uh, mapping. Um, one diagram to another diagram, maybe in a, perhaps in a different category. And it's a functor because it has, satisfies a proxy called functoriality. And what that means is it's a structure preserving mapping. And all that really means is you, you open up each of these boxes within the diagram and replace it with a sub-diagram that respects the types. So the way you do this is you first give a mapping on the objects. Um, in this example, I'm going to give a doubling mapping. So given whatever type. I'm going to map it to itself twice. So food becomes food and food. And then water becomes water and water. And then energy becomes energy and energy. And here I give a mapping for the boxes. And I'm going to map them into sub-diagrams. And so the pasta state becomes two pasta. And then the wine state becomes two wines. And uh, for human, you want to everything to compose together, right? So you need to add some swaps at the beginning to make things compose. And once you have this, you can convert any diagram consisting of just past the one and human. You can like keep applying this functor. Um, so once I define this functor, I can I can now turn this 
smaller diagram here into a larger diagram. So now there's two people having dinner. Um, so this is kind of a way you can like recursively modularly build, modularly build uh, diagrammatic software. Right, um, so this is one example of functor. You go from abstract diagram to abstract diagram. But now perhaps you want to like embed some meaning into this diagram. Um, so let's say um, I've defined this, this mapping. I'm going to turn each thing into two qubits. I want to model this as a two qubit system. Every food is a two qubit system. Every water is a qubit system. And then I, I, def I fill in each box with some sort of quantum circuit, which I've defined here. It's not super important how I defined it. But you see, you can, you can build more logic on top of this software. The, the, this is like NumPy before diagrams. You can do any kind of diagrammatic thing you want um, with this software. So I've defined another functor. And now the smaller diagram, past the one human, becomes this quantum circuit, right? Um, like roughly speaking, this is, this is the past the I'm modeling with this quantum state. What, wine is this quantum state, and then human is this quantum state that takes four qubits in, alpha's two qubits out, post selects on two of the qubits. You can, you can put other things in, but this is just a simple example. Um, but once I've def now that I've done this, I can combine these two functors together, right? So I can, I can take the original diagram, make it doubled, and then apply the quantum functor, and now I have a larger quantum circuit. So as long as I know what to do with the smaller boxes, I can convert any larger diagram that consists of these, a free composition of these boxes. So now you get an even more complex circuit, and um, it's very little code to, to do this. You don't want to build these circuits by hand every time. That's what I'm saying. You can, you can think in this high-level diagrammatic schema. And once you have these circuits, you can, you can further convert them. So this is another functor. With DiscoPy comes with a, a functor that converts this, uh, quantum circuits to ZX diagrams. And, uh, Specifically, we map this to physics, which is a, a library for ZX diagrams that you can, you can, uh, it's pretty cool. You can drag things around. You can apply rewrites. Um, that's actually one of the, one of the challenges that we can for the ZX team. So like we can, you can try to extend this piece of software to like do kind of more interesting rewrites uh, by hand on software. Um, here's another thing you can do. Um, DiscoPy supports converting quantum circuits to ticket format, which supports all sorts of quantum circuit backends. So, so from DiscoPy, you can evaluate circuits from kind of different machine vendors, uh, which I think is quite cool. So from, from having dinner, we suddenly have this kind of quantum circuit. Um, and here's kind of its representation. Nice. Um, or you, can, you might want to just simulate it directly on your machine. So this is what you can do. You can, you can leverage tensor network libraries to advantage. So DiscoPy integrates well with tensor network libraries. And on top of it, we've built our own density matrix simulator, which works very fast. This, this isn't your like, average like, kind of state vector simulator, which struggles at 20 qubits. If you had, if you had some sort of large circuit, which like, had 50 qubits, but the kind of entanglement is, between the systems is relatively low, and it has some sort of tree-like structure. You can, you can do up to 50, 100 qubits, um, as long as you, like, you only care about a couple qubits at the end. It knows how to kind of contract it in a clever order. So, so it's really useful for our experiments, since, as you see, we, we use grammar, and grammar as a tree, and there's local entanglement. So we can actually simulate much larger systems than you if you use, like, Qiskit or something like that. So yeah, this is the this is the output tensor of uh, I think the four qubits. I can't remember exactly how many qubits there were. Um, but yeah, as a quick recap, this is like let's say we have some sort of process that we model using this kind of diagrammatic notation, and uh, and we can embed meaning using functors by converting this higher level schema into into quantum circuits. So if you if you believe this is how your problem works, this is how this process can be modeled, and you believe that, say, each box can be modeled with a quantum state or like some unit tree or a density matrix or a CPTP map, if you, if you think that this is how you could build software in general, right? You can, ha you can have some sort of problem, you build thing, and 
you put quantum things into it. Um, so we're going to use this kind of idea to do QNLP. So it's a way to develop high-level diagrammatic schema. So now we're going to move to Lambek. Lambek is a QNLP toolkit written in Python. Both of these packages are open source. You can use it and contribute to it if you want. There's a community, there's a Discord. You can go and ask questions if you want. Um, yeah, so, and, and it, it helps you develop models for QNLP. Um, here's, the, here's one model, for example. Uh, you could decide that um, you have, here's a sentence, fat cats eat rats. And you might say, I want to combine these words in such a way that I don't care about the ordering of the words. So you can combine it using a spider. As we know, the spider's commutative, and you can fuse and unfuse. So you actually don't, this doesn't capture the ordering of the words. I only care about what's in the sentence. So this, you build this schema, you convert to a quantum circuit. This ends up corresponding to a very old natural language model called um, bag of words. So you're essentially element-wise multiplying the word embeddings for each, each, um, each word. And surprisingly effective. So it's a, it's a good baseline. And uh, here's another example. You might want to care about the ordering of the words, and you kind of read in the words, these tokens, from left to right. And uh, this kind of resembles the, the kind of architecture of a recursive neural network. You, start, you have a starting token, and then you eventually repeatingly insert words into it. And these Ys in the middle correspond to hidden. They carry the hidden state of a recursive neural network, a, a recurrent neural network, sorry. Um, so as you can see, you don't necessarily have to put quantum circuits in. You could, if you don't have cups and caps, you actually just live in normal monoidal category and not a compact closed monoidal category. So you could put all sorts of interesting things for your semantics. Um, yeah, so you put a quantum circuit and you get, you get QRNN, which is nice. Um, yeah, but uh, we, we are interested in other things. We are interested in grammatical models. We, we think we think that uh, we want to do we want to model these problems based on the structure, and we think the structure maybe perhaps come from comes from the grammatical structure of the sentence. So you, you, if you model want to find the meaning of a sentence, you might want to combine the words in the way that the grammar tells you to. So here's an example example of another sentence: "Cat eats rats," and uh, "cat" is a noun, "rat" is a noun, subject object. And in the middle, you have what is known as a transitive verb, which takes in a noun on the right, a noun on the left, and give you, gives you a sentence. So far, I haven't combined them yet. But as you can see, it's kind of obvious how to combine them. We've done this a lot today already. So we can do this with just a few uh, lines of code, maybe one line even. And here you get a Bisco cat diagram. Um, where well you get output here as a sentence type, then you know as a grammat grammatically well-formed sentence. Um, so we know we can actually you know, convert this to a quantum circuit and try to see what it means. Here's another example. Um, here we have fat cats eat rats. Here, fat is an adjective which takes a noun and gives you another noun. So that's why it has this noun, noun left adjoint type. Um, as you can see, the, the types of the other words aren't changed, and, and that's kind of a prophecy of the pre grammar that Bob talked about earlier today. Um, it's kind of a, a lexical grammar. You, you, you give the type to the word, and in many cases, you can combine the words in the same way using the same types. Um, if you've studied like formal grammar, linguistics, you might come across like uh, constituency grammars. They're kind of similar. You have your nouns, your Ns, your MPs, your VPs, your S. It's, it's kind of similar, but this is for categorical grammars, which I will talk a little bit more. I will talk a little bit more about later. Um, yep. So another well-formed sentence. That's fine. Um, yep. Of course, it will be completely impractical to manually specify the parts of each sentence, but uh, Lambeck comes with this state-of-the-art uh, CCG parser known as Bobcat which automatically parses sentences and converts them into these um, diagrams. Um, so it's, it's, it's a neural, we trained it, and it's, it's a state-of-the-art uh, parser for categorical grammar, which is quite nice. Um, so here's it in action. Well, I ran it five minutes ago, well, 20 minutes ago. If you input such a sentence, it will give you the parse tree, 
and this is this is what is known as a CCG grammar, uh, combinatory categorical grammar, um, just another ca type of categorical grammar. It's it's quite similar in spirit to what Bob had mentioned today with uh, pregroup types, uh, pregroup grammars. So here's the parse tree, and here's what the parse tree looks like in DiscoPy, and. Uh, you can functorally map this again. It's another structure, structurally preserving mapping into this disco cat diagram, fat cats eat rats. So again, same thing, but now it looks like a pre-group grammar. Um, yep. And now we're ready to do disco cat experiments on it. So, uh, yep, so I have this corpus of text. It contains a lot of sentences and um, you can actually read them in and parse it all at once batched. Um, so so this, this line of code reads in a list of sentences and converts them into a list of diagrams. Uh, as you can see, some of these sentences are actually quite long and complex, and um, you can have a look to see that the grammar kind of makes sense, like there's a noun, buster there, comes out as a noun, which makes sense conjunction types, determiners, and so on. If that's the sort of thing you're interested in squinting at. Um, this swap is, a, is an artifact of the CCG grammar. It's, it's a rule known as cross-composition. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's, it's out of the context of this talk. But we can, map, we can now map this to quantum circuits. Um, how do we do this? We, we, we use parameterized quantum circuits. So Lambert comes with a bunch of uh, quantum ansatz, and here we use the IQP ansatz, which uh, consists of a list of Hadamard gates followed by a layer of diagonal gates, and then followed sorry, by more Hadamards. And if you replace each box with this kind of circuit, with this kind of sub-circuit, you get an overall circuit that describes your, your sentence. So here's what it looks like. So the original diagram was this, fat cats eat rats and then you end up getting this quantum circuit. Does this make sense? Is this? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, you can also send this to tensor networks, although we primarily, Lambeck is a QNLP package, we can also do like classical tensor networks, and that's another interesting way to train these models. So we can convert these diagrams into tensor networks, and each wire here is carrying the dimension of the vector space. So if you imagine like this is a vector, this is basically a matrix, this is an order-free tensor, and the wires correspond to contraction, tensor network contraction. If you do that, you can do eval on it. Yep, so here's another, oh, we come to the rewriting section. So sometimes you want to run things on a quantum computer, but your quantum computer is too small, so you can't really put it on there, and it takes too long to run, so on and so forth. What could you do? Like you could you could apply rewrites to it, right? So I've talked about functors and Discopy and Lambeck so far. You've seen a lot of functors already. You can use functors to reduce the size of your diagram. So how do you do this? In this example, you have cat eat rats on mats, and uh, you see that on the word on has a has five wires. So this is kind of an order three tensor, order five tensor, and if each vector space we assign sentence and noun to have like a vector space of 100, so that's reasonable, right? And now we want 100 elements to describe its position in, in higher order space. Then you end up having 100 to the 5 to describe this tensor, which is way too large. We can't even put down a computer. Like, I mean, we can't do efficient contraction with it. So we want to reduce the size of this tensor. So Lambert comes with some rewritings that you could, uh, you could replace it because there's, there's this NR type and this NRR type, and it's kind of, it's basically just carrying the meaning of this cat, these cats, you know, it's going in and out. So you can model it as just having a cap, so we replace the word on, which had five wires, and then you place it with a sub diagram with now three wires plus this cap, and when you put it together, suddenly you have smaller tensors, and you can now remove these cups and caps using the normal form method, which applies the snake equation. So you see here, there's like a really long cap, really long cup, and a really small cap here. They form a snake, so you can remove it. And now you are using less qubits. Uh, yeah, let's 
good. And Lambda also come also acts as a standalone tool for like uh, formal grammars. You can use it to parse things. So if you input, if you just run it as a command on your terminal, saying Lambda, and you put in a sentence, it will give you a pre-grid diagram. Here's a very nice kind of ASCII Unicode printing code. It's always fun to write this sort of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so so now that we have a way to turn sentences into parse trees and parse trees into quantum circuits, parameterized quantum circuits. Now we can train it as, as Constantinos has described. And it's, it's essentially a, a classic, a typical supervised learning training loop. And um, so Lambeck also has support for that. Um, what's this doing here? Ah, yes, you can do further, you can do further rewriting. You can bend this establish around doing the categorical transpose, which was what Constantinos was trying to show you earlier. And um, I see, like, so the functor is really cool. It knows, I've given the, I've given the mapping from, of the nouns as states, but you see here, establish dagger is more like an effect. It's like the dagger of the original state. But I don't need to give a new mapping for it because we know, you know, if I know the mapping of establish, then the dagger of establish is the dagger of the state which it maps to. So that all of these commutative algebraic properties are encoded inside this GoPy. Um, which is really nice. So yeah, you get you get this really narrow quantum circuit, which would have been like I don't know, like a dozen qubits, and now it's only four qubits. It's cool. Um, yes. Okay. Now back to training the model. So you can first you build a model by passing in all the diagrams you're about to train on. So you pass in the train circuit and validation circuit. Um, so it knows which symbols appear in the circuit. So you, as you can see, each word gets filled in with um, gates and rotations where the rotation values are parameterized. So now this NumPy model is just collecting what symbols are gonna appear in your model and then does optimization on them using gradient descent. And uh, you define your loss function. Here we choose the binary cross entropy uh, loss function. I think someone was asking about loss functions earlier. This is one of them. Um, and then we have accuracy function, which just checks that the predicted label, how many of the predicted labels match the actual ground truth in, the, in our data set. <coughs> Once you have the loss function, you have the accuracy function, you have your model filled, filled up with train, train, train circuits and validation circuits, you can give it hyperparameters and to the trainer, to the model, you can start training. And, um, you get this, so it took a little while, so I ran ahead. And as you can see, roughly speaking, loss goes down, accuracy goes up. So um, it works, but if you, if you play more of it, you get better accuracy, and, and some of you will be doing that um, this weekend with the QNLP projects. So um, in conclusion, Lambeck is cool, DiscoPy is cool, you can pip install it, it's open source. You're welcome to contribute. Um, and you have any questions, we have a Discord. Um, you can talk to us, ask any questions about Lambeck, DiscoPy, compositionality, category theory, um, QNLP in general. Um, so so um, yeah, thanks to everyone who's worked on this project. And also thanks to Ian, who half of this notebook he made. Um, so thank you, and thanks for listening. <laughs>